Welcome everyone. We are recording today on Cinco de Mayo. I have to give a shout out because if I didn't, I would be disappointed in myself. It's also Cinco de Mato. It's my fiance's birthday. So happy birthday, Matt. Um, we are here recording with a new friend, Rachel. She is the owner of the Beauty Boost Columbus. And so we are super excited to have her on today and hear all about her entrepreneurial journey and the work that she has done. So welcome, Rachel, and welcome listeners. Hi, Let's take it away. Having me. Yay. <laughs> so to give us a little bit of a uh, just intro of who you are and what you do and, and how you came into this world? That's a big question. Um, so I'm Rachel. I'm in Columbus, Ohio. I started a company called The Beauty Boost in 2015. And the mission is simply to help women feel empowered, feel healthy, feel beautiful. And we do that through different events and experiences. So Typically, um, every month, what you would expect to see is one to four events that kind of range under four categories. So we do retreats, whether it's like a weekend getaway to Hocking Hills or a local day retreat, fitness events, empowerment workshops, and socials. Um, and I had a long journey of jobs before I started doing this. Do you want me to go into that? Yeah. <laughs> we do. Like, okay. The yeah, journey absolutely. is the part that we're okay. most interested in because while we yeah. know that you're offering amazing things and we mm -hmm. want to get to that, it is usually – for people to get to a point where they're doing amazing things, they've usually been through a pretty interesting journey to get there. Yeah. Um, well, I'm from Wheeling, West Virginia. I was lived there 18 years, and I moved here for college, went to Otterbein. Um, I graduated in 2008, lived in L.A. for a year, came back, and – I had a lot of jobs. I It started out of selfish reasons. Like I just absolutely hated working for other people. I had benefits. Like the work I did was fine. There was nothing wrong. So it was really hard to explain to people like and my family why I just – this was not for me. And so that was like always in me, you know, kind of stirring around like something else is out there. And during that time um, – after about like six years of so of doing those jobs, so kind of like my late twenties, um, really bad timelines. I um, got my I did a few things. I got my yoga certification. I didn't think I would teach though. I went through Marie Forleo. So if anybody listens to her, I love her. I did all her free content for like years, and then I paid for her six week B school course. I'm not a big like online person, but it was hugely helpful, and I still go back to it. And my good friend, Kim White, put up a Facebook post that she had just gotten her life coaching certification. I also did not know what that was. That wasn't like a commonly used word. And she was looking for a pro bono student. And so I was like, I'll do it for free. So between her coaching and um, Marie Forleo's program, it really helped me create a version of what the Beauty Boost is today. I feel like working with Kim was the first time in my life that I had – ask myself, like, what is my ideal day? You know, what kind of things do I want to work on? Now it's like so second nature. It's insane to me that people don't think this way. But um, that was like very impactful. And it's not like I went to a session and I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do with my life. And then I did it. This is over the course of like a year. And I didn't just quit my job. So I have friends who have, you know, I have a good friend who started a meal prep company that's very successful in Columbus. And she just like up and quit and went all in and invested. And that's awesome. I am just not that kind of person. So I um, was at my marketing firm job and doing Beauty Boost on the side. And I was just kind of started with a website and a Facebook page. This was before like TikTok, Instagram, all the things. Um, started with a retreat. Just wanted to break even. I think I made $200 and I was so happy. And But more so, I saw the impact it had for women. So that's really what set the fuel to the fire, I guess. And I kept going from there. But I was working full-time while doing Beauty Boost. And it was kind of like as Beauty Boost grew, like a scale. As Beauty Boost grew, I went down to part-time at my full-time job. And I was teaching yoga. Teaching yoga – helped me have side income and meet a lot of women that would be like my exact target audience. Mm -hmm. um, and then when Beauty Boost grew more, I quit my marketing job and got like a re like a behind the desk retail job like I might do in college um, for half, less than half the money, no benefits. But it put me in a space where I was also meeting 
a lot of women or people in the fitness world that would help and just paying some money, like set money. Um, and I think that's really important to note because a lot of people like want these changes in their life, but they don't want anything. They don't want to feel uncomfortable. And I don't think you cannot not feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And then as that, as babies grew more, I ended that job, was just teaching yoga, doing freelance work, and then eventually fully just doing Beauty Boost. So there's a lot of really cool takeaways from that where it was kind of like you you didn't really know what you wanted to do. You just knew that it wasn't the standard thing you'd been told that you should do. It kind of like moving around from different jobs for a little while. Mm-hmm. And then starting with the um, the life coach, helping you learn to find that clarity of like, okay, what do I actually want to do? And you mentioned that like, you know, sometimes you had to get a little bit uncomfortable. Like how do you personally manage that discomfort? Because that is something that people – come up against on a daily basis. And it's something that holds people back a lot of times as to like, hey, I really want to do this thing, but I can't because of all of these other things and the way. How do you manage that discomfort? It's just going to get worse as you grow. So, um, but you're able, your ability to like manage it, I can, I would say like my give a F barometer has grown drastically now. So things that used to set me into a frenzy. Now I'm just like, all right, it's fine. I'll just figure it out. Um, The roller coaster of it. I think it's like anything, you know, it's like the first time you go to the gym, you're going to be pretty uncomfortable, but like it gets your ability to take that in starts to get easier and easier, if that makes sense. So I don't Mm -hmm. think there's like a perfect answer. I think you just have to do it and know it's going to be uncomfortable and do it anyhow. But I definitely feel like you can set yourself up for success, meaning for me, I feel like I did like a mental cleanse the first year where I just absorbed all of Marie Forleo's like free, helpful content. I put myself at events through the Wonder Jam at the time who were putting on events for more like entrepreneur type people. So I was meeting people in this space. I tried to surround myself with people who were encouraging and positive, you know, took care of myself mentally, physically, journaled, all those kind of things. Um, So that can help you, you know, if you don't have that baseline set up in your life, it's very hard to do well or have energy mentally or physically for any of it. But once you start doing it, I do think it gets easier. Um, and then it just becomes like your norm. What do you do to protect your like energy as you go through the day? Now that you do have that flexibility, a little bit more flexibility, we should say, mm-hmm. there's always stuff to be done. But how do you ensure that you're not just running yourself into the ground as you would with a typical nine to five? Yeah. Um, I've always had a little bit of like an energizer bunny type spirit. So even in college, I was like an athlete, worked three jobs, had internships. I just feel like it's how you manage your time and time blocking. Um, For me currently, it means I don't start my work until 10 a.m. So my morning, I like do a workout class. I walk my dog. It's not rush. I eat breakfast, sitting down. And then I know I'm going to work from like 10 to three or 10 to five or whatever it might be. And certain things are on my calendar and it's time blocked. Um, And I feel like I will put in social activities throughout the week. And a lot of my job is social anyhow. So that's a great perk of what I do. But, um, and then, you know, scheduling things. If people just randomly call me, I'll say like, hey, I'm not free right now, but happy to send you my scheduling link. Or, um, yeah, just, I feel like it's kind of the basics, but the basics are the things that make the difference. Well, I think it's, I think it's kind of funny that you feel like it's the basics because there's a (laughs) lot of people who are like, oh my gosh, you just like, somebody calls you and you're just like, I don't have time right now. Like that's a hard thing for them to even say. Um, How long do you, like, do you feel you've always been really good at like setting boundaries and like just being like, this is what I'm available. This is what I'm not available for. Or is that something that you had to work on? Um. Everybody has a different personality. I'm really into the Enneagram. So I'm an eight, which is the challenger, a little bit more blunt. Um, I feel like I'm always respectful, but I I do have a blunt personality. So it's never been hard for me, but I do think I've done a better job with it over the years and I continue to learn and do a better job with it. So you got to find your voice and what feels right for you and how you word things and what boundaries you set for yourself. But I mean, boundaries protect your peace, you know? So when you know that, it's like, it's not that hard. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's I love that really statement. Boundaries protect your yeah. peace. Yeah. 
Boundaries predict your peace. I love that. I have a question. Are you at all familiar with human design? Um, we have had human design people set up at our events. I know a little bit, but not a ton. I was going to say, do you know what your type is? No. <laughs> I don't know. She I sounds like a generator. I, that's what I was going to say. She sounds like a generator. Generators that- are the ones who are like really, really good at like doing the stuff. Like oh, they're no. kind of that energizer bunny, like kind of like. Mm, they, I don't know. They, I'm like the idea. And then I get kind of like ADHD mm. with the task stuff. Maybe like a manifesting generator. Okay. Like they're like the ideas and the doing. This the the energizer bunny side of you. I was just like, ooh, that feels generator. I know. I was I was like, hmm. And knowing the, the that boundaries. I know little to know about human design, I am very newbie to it. <laughs> but it's fascinating, truly. Yeah. That's been something that we have really like uh, adopted into our own journeys. That's helped us understand each other better too. Because I'm a projector and she's a projector, and so the way that we are able to show up and interact has Mm -hmm. been super interesting to learn. And then within, like, I love that you brought up the Enneagram because it's, it's something that like self-development obviously was a huge portion of your own journey. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you feel like that made a huge difference in the, um, in the, the way that your story has played out and the way that you were able to move through those quote unquote, uncomfortable times, like taking a position as like, in the retail area where it's it's not the full-time job that you were working and it's mm-hmm. not just jumping into your business. It's something that is helping you along the way. But I feel like that is a struggle for a lot of people because they feel like it's they're they're failing or they're giving up on their dream if they're taking any steps that aren't exactly Mm -hmm. in their business. So do you feel like that personal development really helped you through those moments? Yeah, for sure. Um, And I think personal development or self-development is like a huge core piece of Beauty Boost today, like our empowerment workshops and what, you know, it's one of the core things of the women we attract are looking for. So um, yes, it helped me. And I think it just continues to play out throughout the Beauty Boost. That's awesome. So with the Beauty Boost, it's, can you tell us a little bit more about how it works? Like you said that it's events and the mission of it. Yeah. How do you get involved? Yeah. So we're currently, um, and I didn't say this earlier, so I started it here in Columbus. I still run Columbus. And then around year three, what seemed like when women were all just reaching out to me via email or Instagram at that time, asking like, hey, is this in my city or can you recommend something similar? I never thought we'd be anywhere else, Um, but to present day, we're in 25 cities nationwide. So from Alaska to Florida, there's a different like me in every city that kind of mimics this blueprint, if you will, of like the one to four offerings a month. Um, But for anybody wanting to get involved, I would say to learn about what's coming up, go to the website, enter your email. We're not going to spam you, but once a week, we send out the events and happenings. If you really want to like dive into something, a weekend retreat is a great option. I feel like that's where, uh, honestly, women a lot of women come solo, which is shocking to me at first. And now it's just like, oh, yeah, of course they do. Um, But that's where women come. You're there. You're immersed for the most time of what we do. And women leave with the most change. And then if you want to take another step up, we have a local brand ambassador team in every city, kind of like the women that or like the eyes and ears help us in all the ways. And we just launched an app last night. I haven't even posted it yet. Um, we just sent it out privately to some people, and we have like 25 women on there um, testing it out. But I'm really excited about it. I feel like it's like the connecting thread for us between the events. Yes, so, that's so awesome. Congratulations. Thanks. So talk to us a little bit more about the retreat because I know that there – because I saw like some of the videos and stuff like that and it looked so peaceful. (laughs) What is like the goal of the retreat? What might a retreat look like and what are people – the people that are kind of showing up and coming to these and then what they're like when they're leaving? Yeah. Everything's designed a la carte, meaning it's not strict. Like if you want to – we have women that sleep in from every workout. That's fine. Most women – majority of women will do like every single thing on the itinerary. Um. But it's really just designed for you to take what you want from it. Every retreat, I would say we have women that have been on like upwards of 10 retreats now. We have a high repeat. Um, every retreat has like the same core components. 
Um, sometimes they differ based on the season, but it's always different based on the speaker or, you know, just different things. But basically every retreat has daily fitness. It's not a yoga retreat. There will be a yoga class. But there's also boot camp or Pilates or barless bar. There's always um, a chef that takes in like all your dietary needs. I feel like the whole world is gluten-free, dairy-free. So we got all that covered, vegan, whatever. Um, we won't let you go hungry. There's always alcohol provided and non-alcoholic drinks. Um, depending if it's nice out, we'll do like a hike. Um, we always have empowerment coaching. Actually, Kim White is typically our coach, the one who helped me create this, which is really cool to see it come full circle. Um, sometimes there's a craft component. Um, we have campfire and cocktail time. There's usually hot tubbing. The summer one is a little different. Um, it's more outdoorsy. We'll normally have kayaks, paddle boards, zip lining, those kind of things. But we always attract a really good group. I think that's what we're known best for. Um, not hoity-toity, very kind, welcoming. And it is really cool to see the women come and then how they leave. We do like a closing circle. Um, just like, you know, go around the table, say like what you want to leave with. And a lot of times people will like tear up, not in a bad way, in a good way. Um, like literally just had one last weekend of April and two girls, you know, were like, we're going to be lifelong friends and they live in different States. And I do feel like once somebody comes to a retreat, they're like, they're like lifers for the beauty boost. So like you're in, but also sometimes women just want to come like with their sister-in-law, have drinks, go hot tubbing and have fun. And I think that is like your wellness too, just like your social aspect, letting loose, not making things so serious. Nothing we do is like too heavy, but it's still like what we're going to give you like some of what you need to with the coaching and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we're not like delving into deep trauma, but right. we're also going to give you some skills to examine your life and see what kind of intention we want to move forward in life. Right. We don't have therapists, but um, just coaches. Nice. Nice. It sounds like a very like a great opportunity to sort of get in touch with yourself and what your what your tensions are, what your goals are, and just kind of like allow yourself to be in nature and have that connection mm-hmm. and allow yourself to be in a, a common community, have a little bit of that positive collective thought. And then instead of a lot of the negative collective thought we get hit with on a regular basis. So it, it definitely makes sense as to why people would be leaving like lifelong friends and feeling so like much more at peace and stuff. It'd be hard to go back into work on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The vibes sound excellent. I'm like, ah, uh, this sounds like no wonder nobody wants to leave. Yeah. Uh, they're like, can we just stay for the forever? Yeah, it is. It is great. Just like being in nature. I feel like on Friday night, people are like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. And I'm like, we haven't even done anything yet, but you're welcome. So yeah. that's awesome. It hasn't been until recently that I've noticed because I've always like – I've never seen myself as like much of a like I love nature kind of person. But just in the last couple of years, it's like, oh, my soul feels refreshed after I go hiking. Like there is definitely like a huge connection there now that I'm like I was probably ignoring this for a really long time because I was too busy to see that it was something that I really wanted. It's nice to have that opportunity with your retreats to be able to like get out. Yeah, like we don't say no phone, but obviously it's like a nice time to unplug and just – I mean, how often do we really do that for ourselves, you know? So, Have you always been into the kind of like wellness, holistic space? Or is this something that like as your journey through adulthood transpired, you kind of moved more yeah. into it? I mean, I think like our generation we wasn't really there. And I grew up in Wheeling, West Virginia. We didn't have a lot of resources. You know, I ate Wendy's every week. And like my mom made four different meals. One of them was macaroni and cheese. Um, but I always – I remember doing, like, Jane Fonda's VHS tapes when, like, when I was 15 years old. I loved, I loved sports. It. I loved moving and being active. I loved friends. Like, I still have the same best friend since like, kindergarten. We don't live in the same city. But – so, like, the social and friendship aspect was always hugely a big piece of my life. And movement and, like, team, team sports mm-hmm. was a big part of my life. Um, I don't think, like, really food and – other pieces came into play until like my early 20s, like out of college probably. And then as I got more and more into Beauty Boost, I've gotten to meet so many cool people that do so many things. My exposure obviously amplified. Um, working with a coach allowed me to see like how impactful coaching is. So I think it just continues to grow. Um, like even how you just asked, like, do you know about human 
design. Right. You know, like I think if I wasn't running Beauty Boost, I might not know all this stuff as much. But I think that's a cool part of what we offer too is we're a big connector to the community. So we spotlight local businesses. That's like a huge part of my job. And they'll set up, we'll feature them digitally or they'll set up at our events and they'll do like mini complimentary experiences where people can just get like a taste or touch point of it. And then they can book those people for the real deal later. Um, So we have like our June Hippy Dippy coming up and October Hocus Pocus. And that's where we have a lot of like energy workers or um, personality test type things going on, Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, or coaches. So I would say to answer your question, it has evolved over time. I love that. I feel like you're like a liaison. Like you're like the connector piece. The way the way that you spoke about your app, like that's how I see you almost as this like But I'm not doing anything. Like I am not the lead of anything at my events. I'm not teaching or educate. I'm just the one putting it all together and spotlighting like everybody else. Yeah, you're giving the opportunity for that connection. Yeah. You're that missing link. Yeah. (laughs) For sure. For real. So do you ever – did either one of you guys ever watch How I Met Your Mother? Yeah. You know how Barney always had a guy for something? I feel like you're like the guy who has the oh, guy for yeah. something. You're like, yeah, I've he's always, like, I've got a guy guy. <laughs> yeah, I've always been a good connector. Like I used to think I was going to be a high school guidance counselor. I was always the person at my jobs that all the people came to and told me their problems. And I was like the fixer or I was like – you know, to like my old boss, like, here's what you should do to motivate this person. This person wants this. It's not just like a raise. Um, so I do feel like it's funny if you look back, I was always the kid hosting the slumber parties, um, and like entertaining. And if you look back at the things that like fuel you or light you up and it doesn't have to be your day job, but it is, I think, cool to maybe make a list. It's something I tell people to do like in their notes app. If they're unclear what they want to do with their life, just even if it doesn't make sense, like just start anything that you enjoyed, going to a baseball game, doing crafts with your friends, whatever, cooking. Um, And you can sometimes see like a common thread. I love that. That's really good advice because I think that there's a lot of people out there who are just kind of like stuck in the minutia of life. They just kind of were like, well, I did, I went to college because I graduated high school and I got this job because that's what my degree is. And then I, you know, have the marriage and the 2.5 kids and the minivan and the this and the that. And all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, like what happened to my life? Yeah. It's the worst spot to be in, but I just read a book and it's like, if you're just kind of like, in the okay era, it's actually worse. You either need to be like, I hate my life because it makes you create change or really like your life. But if you're kind of just like in the coasting, it's really hard because it's like I could coast. And I think there's a lot of pressure on our society to like live your dream, do what you love. And even though I get to do that, I don't think it has to be that way. I think you can look at a job and – I mean, if it's making you miserable, that's different. But your job can just be your job and gives you the f- money and security and freedom you need to do all the things you love outside of your job. Or it can, you know, be what you love. But at some point, yeah, you got to, like, analyze your life and see, okay, if you're not liking something, what are little changes you can make now to create big changes later? Or how can you add in more joy and things you enjoy doing into your daily life? So you have this, you know, you start this company, you're, you're across the whole nation now. Um, you obviously have a very unique mindset regarding how do you view your life? How do you view what you want to do within your life? Do you, like, do you recommend that type of coaching to the people that you work with? Or do you provide that coaching to the people that you work with just to make sure that kind of everybody's staying up at that, like, elevated mindset? Nobody's getting into that, like... At okay life kind of thing. You mean like for the women running the Beauty Boost, our Mm -hmm. city owners? Um, We do a lot of coaching. And um, so it's a franchise model. So every woman in their respective city runs and owns the Beauty Boost, but they're all part of our team. And we home office provide a great deal and ongoing forever. And one of the things is coaching one-on-ones, team groups. They're in like subgroups. Um, We definitely, you know, talk about, we're, we're in a team Slack where we'll share like books we're reading or podcasts or all that. So, and it's, it's, you know, if you can imagine it's like amazing women that are running each city. So yeah, I mean, they, 
you definitely, they need to be, everybody needs to be taking care of themselves to be able to do this kind of work. And most of them have a full-time job or other types of income or other jobs as well. Um, some, a couple women do beauty bees full-time, but for the majority, you know, we have like real estate agents or um, remote workers or whatever doing it for the passion piece and the income it provides. Um, and we're always looking to expand to other cities. But yes, definitely encourage. It's not something like we, you know, like really hone in on specifically always. But um, I just think by nature, these women just like me are immersed in this lifestyle. So we normally attract somebody that is into these things. So what's been your favorite like personal growth, either book podcast, movie, video, documentary, whatever? Um, I really liked the four-hour work week back in the day. I feel like it was one of the first books that – if you watch TikTok, like I do all the time, um, there's so many that show like how people live in other countries or how the whole eight-hour day is like BS. And I feel like the, the four-hour work week was the first thing I had read that kind of introduced that concept. I mean, like why are we just – like? who told us we need to work eight hours or who told us age 64 is retirement or whatever. It's mm-hmm. kind of just like what we're conditioned, like almost brainwashed. And then we just follow suit without realizing it. And so I've always had like more of a rebellious personality as a child and onward. Um, and that can be good or bad. Um, but I think that book is one of my favorites still that kind of changes that mindset of just like, think, you know, a lot of people don't, we don't question things or think for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, And, Mm -hmm. and also all plays into like how you're raised and all that and your personality type. But I, I think the more we do, the better it is. Mm -hmm. I love that your motivation for starting this whole journey was freedom and that you're, and it's, it's essentially like, that's what you're saying is that this, this, this entity that you've created provides a space for people who are looking for freedom and a guide almost to other individuals, to other services, or like you said, practitioners, like you have real estate agents, you have people who would show up for experiences, right? That would allow them to add things to their own toolbox to help create more freedom within their lives. So yeah, by creating a connection. It. I never wanted it that way, but that's like, I always say like selfish reasons. I wanted to like do my own day, but that is very accurate. And I think that is why I'm so excited about um, also just like our business model with the women that are in charge of running their own cities. Like it can be a great piece of freedom for them too, just like it was for me, if that's what they're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't selfish reasons by any means. <laughs> it was freedom. And, and, and you have given... I mean, do you have like a figure of how many people you have in the entire? (laughs) Um, I am terrible with numbers, but yes, we have like a media kit, you know, when we're working with like national sponsors Mm -hmm. or things. And it's helped me see like, not looking as a number, but like these are true women that I know their stories and all that. But it's kind of cool to see like across the country, how many women are reaching, whether it's just digitally. Um, Because a lot of – I was shocked when, you know, I'm not – I don't even have a personal Instagram, but how, like, many women would come to my retreat and say, like, oh, yeah, I followed you on Instagram for a year, and now I'm – this is my first event. And I'm like, really? Okay. So just seeing the power of social media when done right um, and then, of course, in person too. Yes. I mean – Right. It's been really cool I mean, you've given them, like, validation to live their lives in a different way. Like yeah. truly, I mean, you're an example of someone who decided that she didn't want to live the mainstream cookie cutter in the box life, that there was something else out there that was better and you didn't know what it was, mm-hmm. but she went through the journey to find it. And now literally what it is, is a guide for others to show them that it's possible because when they look at you, they see the entrepreneur, they see the woman. They see the individual who decided that this idea, this passion was worth putting it all on the line, even 
in moments of, like you said, you, you took a step away from your full-time job to take a job in retail because it was helping you pay your bills mm -hmm. and move you forward towards your goal, but it didn't fill your cup and that was okay because you were like, yeah. no, it, it, it's serving a purpose. And so they can look at you and your story as an example, as inspiration, and they can also be part of your community and feel what it feels like to be around people who have those same priorities and values and have that like energetic connection. Yeah, exactly what you're saying. You know, I hate like sounding like a textbook, but like our surveys when we've done them um, or when what women tell me is like the number one reason what they're looking for is to meet like-minded women. Like they want to be in a space, not saying women just like them that look like them or any of that, mm -hmm. but um, that just like are into self-development, that just, you know, something outside of just happy hours with their friends. Maybe they still love happy hour, but they also want to do other things too. So that's definitely what women are looking for. I love for, that. Who we attract. I love that. I love that. Well, and I think it's kind of hard because Charles and I have talked about this quite a bit and I have other people in my life who have been through their own personal growth journeys where it's like, it can feel a little lonely sometimes, like where you feel like you're starting to kind of like grow out of how you used to respond within a relationship and the other people associated with that relationship are not okay with the growth that you've made. And you just kind of feel like, gosh, I just feel like I, I don't hang out with as many people anymore. Or, you know, like your, your relationships themselves are much more fulfilling, but you don't have as many. So having an environment with like-minded people where you can say like, like you mentioned, some of this personal growth, like they don't want to just get together and, and chat over drinks. Like they want to get to know somebody deeply, get to know how you can move forward and stuff. And providing an environment goes back to what Chelsea said, where people can see like, oh, there's other people who can live like this. Just like when you read that book and you were like, oh my gosh, it just totally popped my mind open that this is even a possibility because we don't know what we don't know. And so being around other people who can do these things and see these things and want to continue on that process just elevates the entire consciousness, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And what you mentioned too, like the isolation piece, um, I never wanted to do beauty with myself. I always wanted to have like a partner. And I would say now I do with Paige. She runs Beauty Beast Cincinnati, and we kind of operate like true business partners. I'm very blessed to have her in my life and to run this with her. Um, but when you are starting something new, like there's always people who aren't going to be supportive. That Sometimes it's the people that you're closest to, like your family, because they just don't understand. I did not have that experience with my family. They were very supportive. But um, with certain friends, you know, or um, people, your friends might be acting out and they don't, you don't. It doesn't make sense to them. They might not be self-aware, but maybe they're just jealous because you're doing something that they wish they could and they don't even realize that they're doing that. Or um, when you take on more of a growth mindset, sometimes people don't always have that same perspective and it could be a romantic relationship, whatever. So there is like almost like a death or sadness to it where you are going to, you can still love those people, but they might not be the same type of relationship in your life anymore. And that's kind of, can be a hard pill to swallow too. But again, you're giving up something for something ideally that brings you more. Mm -hmm. How did you, how did you work through some of those situations where you felt like there were people who were not necessarily being supportive or needed to maybe just, you needed to move in different directions? Yeah. Um, well, I didn't, <laughs> so I didn't really have any kind of like crazy story. My mom's always been very laid back and just says like, yeah, whatever you want to do. Um, I would say my grandma still has her like worries, but now she's always like, I'm so proud of you. You know, once you show, you've proven it, people are like all on your, on board again. Um, but I have had some, certain friendships where they have fizzled down to what they were at one time. Um, there's never been like animosity or anything like that, but um it's just not the same. Uh, I don't know. I think always staying true to your why or coming back to your why, like remembering what you're doing and why you're doing it and what your deeper purpose is and just all the other things, continuing to take care of yourself, surrounding yourself with people who do support you. Um, and But just like even listening to this podcast and knowing that that might happen and understanding it, I think sets you up for more success. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, out of it's not out of nowhere. You're kind of – ready for the punches as they come. Do you feel that like confidence plays a role in that? Like confidence in yourself, confidence in your own plan to be able to um, 
have the people in your life who are a little bit, um, like you said, worried. They're worried it's not going to work. And so they bring up all of the things that could go wrong um, yeah. and try to protect you. Um, do you feel like it was confidence that helped you get through that? Or what do you feel like it was? Um, yeah. And fake it till you make it. But I think mindset is the number one driver of all things. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm reading a book right now. And it's about millionaires and they interviewed them and it had nothing to do overall speaking, had nothing to do with their um, education or the way they were raised or their family's income. They all were millionaires because they believed they were going to be millionaires, which is crazy, but not crazy. You know, when you think about it, your mindset directs everything. It doesn't need to be like this woo-woo thing. I think you're. it's very um, – there's research behind it now. Like it makes total sense. If you think about what you feed your mind is going to come out in your energy and your actions and your actions are going to drive results. So I think mindset is the biggest piece. And I guess you could say that is confidence to um, self-worth. All, how you speak to yourself internally is so huge. Um, of course, like you can't be fake with yourself or just pretend, but um, – you know, what am I trying to say here? Like you're always going to have doubt and you're always going to have limiting beliefs and that's normal. That means you're human, but it's just like, what do you do with them when they come up? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. I love that. I feel like the statement of like-minded being that that's the intention for people to connect with you is almost the opposite. It's, it's not, um, they're not looking for people who have cookie cutter mindsets. They're looking for people who have an open mind, who have the ability to allow others to believe what they believe and explore the beliefs that are landing within them and try some of that on for style, have that freedom, like you said. So I love that. I think it's, it's really beautiful that you have created this, this space for people to be able to connect and really, uh, find community. Thanks. Yeah. And earlier when you asked me about the retreats, like how women come versus how they leave, I think that's been the coolest part for me being doing this for like roughly eight years now is I have seen women who started, you know, five years ago and then to see them today and not just like to our horn, but it's like they're whole different people in a good way because, you know, they've really immersed themselves into this, surrounding themselves, um, made amazing friends, maybe worked with some of the coaches or the pieces that we've you know, connected them with. And it's just, it's crazy to see. It's really cool. Uh, Mm -hmm. Toot your horn, girl. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We are all about that here. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because what you're doing is huge. Yeah. Huge. It is because at the end of the day, like, like you said, it goes back to mindset and and what you direct your thoughts towards is what's going to happen. And once you start recognizing that you, like, I think it's really hard for some people to believe that that's true. Because if they're in an unhappy situation, then the opposite is true, that like they're responsible for the unhappy situation, right? And Mm -hmm. that's a really hard pill for people to swallow. So to be able to come out of that and be like, no, I can – I can choose to see different things in my day. I can choose to see a different opportunities present themselves to me. It's like the whole, if you're going to buy, if you're thinking, oh, I think I might want to buy a new car. And all of a sudden you're going to see that car everywhere, even though it's been the same amount of cars the entire single time that you've been, you know, living your life. But now all of a sudden you're seeing that car over and over again. You know, if you're thinking, you know, I am, you know, I am stuck in this situation. Everything that you're going to be seeing is keeping you stuck in that situation. Yeah. You know? And some people are in really hard, you know, life situations, yep. maybe a, a bad marriage with the kids and they're financially dependent on that person and they can't just snap their fingers and be like, well, I believe I'm going to have a great day. You know, it's not right. that, yeah. but there are definitely, um, instead of telling themselves every day that they're stuck in this, it's like, okay, what? Can I do and empower myself? Can I take on a side job to create, start creating income for myself? Can I mm-hmm. focus on being the best mom to my kids and have a game plan for, you know, getting out of this eventually? Like there's little small shifts and tweaks regardless, mm-hmm. I think, of what situation you might be in that won't happen overnight, but they will change the day-to-day and can continue to evolve. Yeah, absolutely. No, well, and I think that thing comes back to the um, – like – like when you actually worked with a coach, you were able to like specify that training to what was going on in your life. Because I know that there's a lot of like self-help stuff, self-improvement um, stuff out there. 
and when you when you're not necessarily in that world or you haven't been down that journey enough it's hard to see how do i how do i put this to myself so you may you may look at yourself and you may not like what your body looks like, you know, and you hear like, oh, you need to speak positively about your body. You say good things, say what you want to see, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, if your subconscious doesn't actually believe that, you can say whatever you want to say in the mirror and it's not going to change, right? Mm -hmm. You have to find things that feel reasonable within your nervous system as that first step, which goes back to the small steps. Like you can't just sit here and be like, I'm going to have a great life, even though my, my spouse is abusive and my, or my child is ill, or we have no money. Like you can't just think the things you have to find something that feels safe for your nervous system that you can have an actual step in. And then that's the first step. And then we can build on that. And then we can build on the next thing. Yep. Agreed. And I think that therapy and, or, the right coach can really help with those things too. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, well, for sure. It's incredible. Well, I have, this has been wonderful. I think that we're just very, very excited to have this connection and this new relationship with you. Um, let's continue to toot your horn. So what are the events coming up in May or June? What are you working on? Like you said, the um, hippy dippy in June, right? June 10th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, we have like about at least I would say two events a month in Columbus. They're literally all listed on our Instagram and our website. But the featured ones are like May is a Women Wonderland panel. So a lot of business owners, it's geared on the topic is the entrepreneur experience and side hustles. So if someone's listening, they want to be in that awesome. space, that's a good one to go to. Um, June is definitely different. It's more stations all around at Olentangy River Brewing with energy work, shopping. Um, but regardless, there's still going to be really cool women at all these events, you know. And then um, down the line is August is our summer camp retreat. So I think that's a great one. We still have space for it. If someone's really looking to go all in. And then we have little happenings in between all of those. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And then we will link. What is the website that you have? Um, the beauty boost, B O O S T dot net. Awesome. And we will have Abigail, we'll put that in the show notes so that everybody can find you there and get connected. Cool. This has just been wonderful. So thank you so much for coming and joining us and, and sharing your little slice of connection and magic with us. We're so grateful. Thanks. Yeah. And if anybody listening has questions or any of that, um, my cell phone and my email is on the website. So you can text or email. That's perfect. Wonderful. Rachel, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I really appreciate the fact that you were able to show kind of how to live outside of the normal standard here in the U.S., how you can build a life of freedom and joy and excitement, and how you can show others in the community how to live the same way. Um, anybody who is listening, if you're feeling like you're a little bit stuck, maybe start getting to some of these events. Start working with other like-minded women. Surround yourself, those top five people in your life who are making the biggest impact on you it might be time to switch those people up and start finding more like-minded people who are seeking out a healthy, well, happy, and free life. Um, and that way we can just kind of continue to uh, raise our collective consciousness and everybody can just start being living happier and healthier lives. So thank you, everybody. We hope you have a fantastic week and we look forward to chatting with you again next week. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs>